Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Deanna Tyler from Apex Brain Center. Thank you so much for joining us as we talk about the healing guide, which is hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So what is hyperbaric oxygen therapy? It's something that we recently added to the office to already complement what we do here. So we specialize in cognitive decline and traumatic brain injuries, as well as learning and behavior disorders, which include addiction. So this really allows for us to extend the benefits of the rehab that we already are performing as well as just assist those in the community who don't have access to hyperbaric chamber to help them with the therapies that they are already doing for their rehab and recovery. So in this presentation, we're basically gonna be doing a brief overview. So we're gonna be talking about uh, the history as well as the common uses behind this therapy. We'll talk about the science behind how this it works, as well as even going into the first experience that you may have, what to expect, and what the costs and benefits are. So we'll start with the history. So this has been around for a really long time, anywhere from around 350 years now. So this technology is not new, it's just finally becoming more popular and mainstream, so most of us are educated on it. So whenever this started in Europe, it was actually before the discovery of oxygen. So at this time, the very first chamber that was discovered and created was actually just a pressurized chamber. And he originally, the person who did this, thought that this would help with lung conditions as well as overall wellness and health. Later on, these became popular in Europe as air baths. So it was really more of a complementary therapy that was just utilized by most people trying to stay healthy. It wasn't until after World War I where we had access to this technology in the United States which was during the influenza pandemic. And later on, we started utilizing it during surgeries as well as recovering from surgeries. So there was a really interesting study uh, in 1950 on pigs. So they essentially removed all the blood from these pigs and then replaced it with a saline solution, which is salt water, and then placed them into these chambers. And these pigs were able to survive with not a single red blood cell in their body. So this really shows just how powerful this technique is and we're going to dive more into the understanding of how this works. So some of the common uses in hyperbaric oxygen therapy, there are people using it in a hospital setting as well as offices such as ours. Hospital setting is typically a hard chamber, so it's going to be different in the amount of pressure that you are receiving as well as oxygen. So these are really life-threatening conditions. So it's going to be things such as bends, which is from scuba diving incidents, or things such as carbon monoxide poisoning, skin grafts that are being rejected, or things such as gangrene from a diabetic neuropathy. So these are really life-threatening conditions, which is why the technology they use is a little bit different than what we have. And we'll talk about that later on in this presentation. So who needs oxygen? Every single one of us does. Every cell, every organ, every single part of us requires it for us to really function normally and appropriately especially when it comes to our brain. Our brain can only survive about five minutes without oxygen, without having permanent damage to those neurons. So it's really vital for what we do in the office, because whenever we're talking about rehabbing the brain, this is one of the sources of fuel that is essential for us to really be able to make these long-term changes. So how does hyperbaric oxygen therapy work? Essentially, we're getting additional oxygen than what you typically can carry. So if you look at that photo, there's a pulse oximeter on someone's finger. You'll see that it says 98. So typically we can carry about 100% oxygen in our red blood cells. So this number is really based on the capillary refill of the finger. And it's a really good estimate of where you are daily. So it's a really good thing to have at home and to check regularly. So what we essentially can do is under pressure, the oxygen molecules will shrink, which will allow for them to be taken into the lungs at a larger amount than usual. Then they're actually dissolved in the blood plasma. So instead of going on the red blood cell, which is what typically happens, we're now using the blood around the red blood cells, which is the blood plasma, to then distribute it to even more tissues than we usually would be able to. So this is why it's such a powerful technique, uh, because really it's doing something that your body can't naturally do, and enhancing that, and it's basically utilizing it to then get the treatment and the care that we need to recover from an injury. So whenever we have an injury, that 100% oxygen is no longer enough sometimes because 100% is what you need just to be a healthy person. 
So what we can do is basically by entering the blood plasma, we then are able to take this and transfer it to all the organs in the body, as well as even cross the blood brain barrier. So that is the protective mechanism we have, which really the brain chooses what it can and cannot let into it. So the fact that we can get this extra oxygen even in the brain itself, that is why it's such a powerful technique for traumatic brain injuries or post-concussion syndrome or anything that is neurologically based because it also enters even the cerebral spinal fluid, which is where we get the nutrients we need for our spinal cord and our brain. So whenever we have low levels of oxygen, it doesn't have to be uh, detrimental. It can be just lower than we ideally would like. So that is when someone is sitting at about 95% oxygen on a pulse oximeter. These are things that really show that your brain is not working efficiently or inability to pay attention make decisions, even regulate emotions. All of these things are requiring for the brain to communicate appropriately between all the lobes of the brain. So oxygen is really important for every single one of us, which is why anybody could benefit from this therapy, even those who are just trying to enhance performance or trying to prevent cognitive decline for the near future. So if you look at the science behind this technology, really we're talking about working all the way to the DNA genetic level. So what we're doing is we're turning certain genes on and off. So whenever we're using the oxygen, we're turning certain genes on. These are the genes that are responsible for new blood vessel formation, new tissue cell growth, growth factor being stimulated, stem cells. All of these things are vital for recovery. But then we also are able to turn certain genes off, the ones that are not benefiting us, the ones responsible for inflammation, cancer, all these cells that really don't do anything good for us, can be shut off by using the pressure in the chamber. And so that is how this really works all the way to deep science behind it. So just one single session, which is 60 minutes typically, affects over 8,000 genes. That's how many are being turned on and off. So this is one single session. So imagine what's happening after five sessions. So it's affecting all the way to the DNA and the cells, and that's what we're made up of. So really, it affects the entire body. Each time you're using this therapy, that's one of the greatest side effects is that even if somebody uses these for brain rehab, they're not just affecting their brain. They're fixing their arthritis. They're reducing all the, basically, all the metal toxicity, yeast infection bacteria that they may have within their body. They are sleeping better. They're eating better. All of these things are just positive side effects of getting a treatment. So we're treating the whole body at one time, which there's not many techniques out there that do that. What's also really interesting about the hyperbaric oxygen therapy is that it actually turns on idling neurons. So these are neurons that are in the brain that are not dead. They just are near the site of an injury and they have shut off. And this is a protective mechanism that our brain really takes part in. So what we can do is we can stimulate those specific neurons and turn them back on. That way, when you are trying to regain back function and you're trying to make neuroplasticity happen, which is changing the connections in the brain, then it's more likely to be effective and it's going to be able to really take that therapy to a different level. So this is a really good quote by Dr. Paul Harsh. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is different from almost all of the other therapies we have. It is a biological repair therapy, a foundational therapy upon which most other therapies can be added. So this means that really it doesn't matter what rehab you're already doing for yourself or someone that you care about. This is something that's going to make that therapy more effective. So if someone's getting speech therapy or occupational therapy or brain rehab like we do here in the office, it's really going to enhance the rehab that you're doing because we'll talk about how oxygen is one of the main components of really being able to make gains in these areas. So what are some of the health benefits? We already talked about how it's shutting off things like inflammation, turning on new cells, new, new blood vessels, new stem cells, and new growth of tissue. But then we're also fighting off bacteria. We're detoxing the body. So this is just another positive side effect to whatever it is that you're getting this treatment for. So who can hyperbaric oxygen therapy help? These are the areas that have been studied for hyperbaric oxygen therapy in a non-hospital setting. 
So things such as traumatic brain injuries, births or anoxic injuries, stroke, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, a lot of these things, if you look at the conditions themselves, a lot of them are based on inflammation. So because we're reducing inflammation in the body, we're really able to tackle a lot of these at one time. Even things such as aging and cognitive decline, turning off autoimmune genes, you know, somebody with MS, somebody who's dealing with Hashimoto's or other neurological autoimmune conditions, migraine, seizures. So there's a lot of different applications of this therapy. And unfortunately, we can't go and talk about each one individually. But if there is a topic, one of these or even another one that you would like to learn more about, please comment below so that I can make another presentation and go over that for you. So let's we'll talk a little bit about how this really ties into what we're doing at the office. So we do brain rehab. And one of the ways that the brain communicates is using neurons which if you look at this photo, you can see that essentially we're building pathways and roadmaps in the brain so that once we've done something a couple of times, it's really efficient at doing that over and over again without really using additional energy or thought behind it. So what we can do is we can use this knowledge and we can essentially rebuild pathways after an injury, just like you would when you're first forming these parts in the brain. So that's what this term is from, neuroplasticity. It's really our ability to mold and shape our brain so we can actually change the brain at any point. We used to think that this was only possible during developmental stages, but we now know that after an injury, we're able to use the science and this knowledge to really bring back certain functions that we may have lost due to an injury. So it's a really powerful thing that we now are aware of, and for this, we need the oxygen. Because it's one of the main components that are really essential for this. We need oxygen, we need fuel such as glucose and ketones, which is basically using carbohydrates or fats. And then we need activation, which is really the brain rehab that we do in various forms, whether we're doing laser therapy or we're doing eye exercises and vestibular rehab exercises, balance, coordination. All of these things tie in together, but they need one another for it to be effective. So this is the chamber that we have. This is a really large chamber. It's actually large enough for two people. So it's really great when we have parents who have an toxic child and they're able to go in there together. Uh, it also has a flow of air throughout its entire time. So fresh oxygen coming in and out of the chamber. And there's enough light for somebody to either read a book or meditate or just relax and take a nap. But it's about 1.3 atmospheric pressure, which is 4 PSI. And this is the number that we're using in this kind of chamber because this is what's been shown in research to be effective for those neurological conditions we just talked about. So what do you expect for your first visit? Basically, the therapy lasts anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes, up to two hours is possible per day. And then what we usually do is we add additional oxygen on top of what's being filtered out by using a nose cannula or a face mask. So you're getting that in addition to what's already in the chamber. And then the only thing that most people really have a difficulty with, which is fullness in the ears. So just like when we go on an airplane or we're driving up a, a lot of mountains, really just that change in pressure can sometimes uh, cause the ears to kind of un being unable to equalize. And it's really easily fixed just by yawning or swallowing. And for some people, uh, they may have to just bear down by plucking their nose. But really, we monitor you the whole time, make sure you're comfortable, and most people haven't had any difficulty with this at all. So what are the side effects? Other than all the positive side effects we talked about, which is improved appetite, increased sleep, reduced joint pain, inflammation, all these benefits. Side effect is maybe you might be tired that day. You know, So this is something we really consider for people who may or may not have other infections going on, like we talked about the detox effect, Sometimes people feel a little bit more tired after this rehab, uh, but really, at the end of the day, people kind of get that second wind of energy, and if anything, you feel more energized than you did before using this therapy. So how many sessions do you need? It really depends on each person. So your condition is very unique, even your recovery is unique. So we don't really want to say right off that just because somebody has a traumatic brain injury, it's a certain amount of dive. It really depends on what you've got going on, and our job as providers is to be uniquely creating a plan for you. So it really is gonna be dependent on how you respond to the therapy that we give you, but we can use science to really understand where we should be thinking and estimating that it would take 
to really make recovery. So that's what we get the 40 treatments from. That is the most researched amount of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Uh, and really, we're looking at five days a week for 60 minutes. So this is just something that's been studied and it gives us a great place to start. But whenever it comes to neurodegenerative conditions, obviously there's a maintenance dose to those, those because these are progressive conditions that are going to keep going on. So our job is to keep the symptoms at bay and prevent it from progressing. So when is it too late? It's never really too late. We can make changes for, to post-concussion syndrome individuals anywhere from three to five years after their initial injury. So this was seen on a spec scan as well as their cognitive test where they scored much better than they had originally. So what are typical costs? Usually anywhere from 150 to 250 is the norm. We charge anywhere from 185 to 200, and then we lowered that down to 150 for those who are using our intensive care programs. So these are the programs that are anywhere from five, 10, or 15 days long, and we're doing about four hours of therapy a day. Now we're able to add this on to make that even more effective to get the most able to get the most changes that we can in that duration of time. We do offer payment plans for those who need it. And these are the references that I use. So if you want to go back and look at any of these and learn more, you're more than welcome to use them. And I also just want to say thank you so much for your time. For those of you who have been listening, I want to offer you a free dive. So if you're one of the first people to call, you can call in and tell them that you watch this presentation and you can get free hyperbaric oxygen therapy a session to see how it affects you. But I really appreciate your time and I hope that you'll learn something and that you have a little bit of a better understanding of what hyperbaric oxygen therapy is and how it may be able to help you.